Alrighty, y'all, we are plugging away here with the riding mowers, and uh, this next series is going to be on this John Deere. Um, I did not have to pay anything for this. Um, it's from my girlfriend's dad. He, he was no longer using it because he has way too much property for a little mower like this. Um, and so he uh, let me have it, take it home, and... Uh, now I'm going to see if I can get it back running again. Uh, the reason why it was parked was, if you know John Deere's, you know this is bound to happen. Especially these, um, I guess, big box store type John Deere's with the 42 inch decks on them. Deck bracket broke right here at the back. So, it actually is not completely severed yet. But, um, that is kind of what cause this mower to be stopped in addition to it not being, you know, um, big enough for the yard that he is now currently cutting with. Um, this is one of the LA-105 series. It has the five-speed transmission. You almost always see them with hydros, um, the pedal-operated hydro transmission. You see the pedals right over there. Um, the L, I think the 110s and up have them this one does not i'm curious to see how these transmissions are i know the hydro transmissions are prone to um going out um, just kind of giving up the ghost uh this one if we want to give see where it came from came from fisherville virginia so i wonder if it was actually bought at this it actually was bought at lowe's i know that but i bet it was serviced here um i, I didn't ask him about the service. I just kind of find stuff like that. But I have the receipt and everything. This mower was about $1,500 new. Um, it's got all the service intervals and stuff under the seat. Your deck wash port. And another thing I've noticed is that this pulley looks like it is offset. And I thought that was an issue with the deck, which I still think it might be, I'll have to look, once we get the deck off, I'll have to look and see what it looks like under, but just by, based on the way that the pulleys and whatnot are aligned, I feel like it, I feel like it is offset, I know that, um, um, in talking to Bruce Pinder, that some of the pulleys are offset, so we'll see if this one is one of those, um, haven't seen one offset like that on one of these type mowers before, so, um, but I've never had an LA-1 series. I've had L, L series and D series that I've worked on. Um, on all of them, oddly enough, have been the 110s. So, this one is a 19 and a half horse Briggs. Uh, and let's see. So, your date code is 10. Well, I'm making it worse here. But that is a 19 right there, which is the day. So the year is 2010. The month is the third month. March 19th of 2010 is when this engine was made, which means this is, and I know this is the original engine on the mower, a 2010 model. And so what I'm going to do first is give this thing a nice bath. All I know so far that it needs it's going to need a right front tire tube because the tire leaks from dry rot um, and just being leaked down the steering when i originally got it it had the battery in and i'm letting it charge now i don't know how many hours are on it yet i'm letting the battery charge up the steering was frozen i'm having trouble getting my grease gun into the grease fittings the grease fittings are good i just can't get my gun in there um, I've used some PV blaster and whatnot, and I've been able to got the, get the steering free, and I'm going to be steering the mess out of it after I get it running and I'm going to drive it around the yard and stuff. Um, this one's got the mow in reverse option. Um, all the deck engagement and stuff is good. I mean, you just pop it on. So, that's good. It's missing the deck belt. Um, I did get an extra set of blades with it, although the blades at first glance appear to be good on it. So, oil is good, tank is empty, 
I had smell-o-vision, I'd let y'all smell what the tank smells like. Actually, the tank is not empty. Oh, boy. Oh, that's some foul-smelling gas. So, I'm going to have to figure out how to get that gas out. Because it is probably a good three years old. And it smells bad. So... The way that the fuel pump mechanism is, I wonder, because there's no fuel in the fuel filter, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if this is gummed up or not. I'll have to take it off and see. Um, probably just taking off the, this right here, which is the... I think it's a low oil indicator and all that good stuff. Take that off and see if we have a lot of junk in the carb. The only thing I don't like about these new carbs is that they screw in up here, and so it's hard to get a screwdriver in without taking the whole carburetor off just to see the condition of them. So I had to break in and do that if we see that it's a little rough. Anyways, I'll stop bantering battery on the charger I will go ahead and wash this mower and maybe first before I wash it so I don't get water and stuff all on me I might go ahead and get this deck off so let's see what we have to venture with if I remember correctly it's basically nothing to get these decks off of these things um, just a couple of brackets here and there that should slide off. Looks like one of them is right here. The clip. That gets the back one off there. We'll do that on the other side. And then I think it's only the front here. Then I just have to disengage the blade spring. And it should be off. It's really... I know I've griped about these John Deere's. Here's the battery charging on it. These John Deere's really are very easy to work on, all things considering. A lot of room and easy to get the deck and whatnot off of it. So I don't really mind it. You know, they're not the John Deere that you're going to get at a dealer, but it's not like they're the worst things in the world. And your third one is right here, right here in the front, right there. So now, next thing I'm going to do, take this clip out, up, there's the blade cable, get a pair of pliers, and there's your spring. So I'm going to get a pair of pliers to, actually, actually I apologize, there's supposed to be a clip here, there's not on this one. So it should just pull out. There we go. A spring in the back there. We'll get that out. I'm going to use this as video to I know how to get these back on. Let's set y'all down just to get the spring out here.
again. two more clips. I knew there was a couple more clips that we had to get off. There's one right here and it's the same on the other side. Let's get these off. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to get those two clamps off. I'll rejoin us whenever I get that off and get the spring off because the spring's getting a little the spring's giving me a little trouble just the way I got to um get to it i'll get them two clamps off slide those out and we'll get the uh we'll get the deck out of this thing all right so those these clips always mess up mess me up hand wise so wear a pair of gloves don't don't do don't follow my advice <laughs> and just do all this barehanded so these these just swing out of the way after you pull them off of their little respective mounting position and so, still haven't gotten the spring off, but we're going to pull the deck out here. All right, so here we are. Um, like I said, less than 10 minutes seems to have taken this off. I am a little curious as to that pulley right there. Now, actually, if you look, that one looks to be okay, but it's still, it also looks to be a little offset, just like this one looks to be a little offset. So I'm going to turn it over here. I'll just move these deck brackets out of the way too. Uh, and that's your height adjusters there. So it's really easy to adjust the height of these decks as well. I don't know if I even want to venture trying to take the spindles off. You can see the deck's got a fair amount of rust underneath. These decks are really thick on these John Deere's. So it's not like it's uh, a big deal. But, I don't know y'all, I just see, I don't see like any stress fractures actually in the deck itself from it. I just see the notorious paint blowing off of it. And it might, let's see, it might just need, it might just need tightening down to tell you the truth because if you look there's a little bit of space underneath right there and uh just lost my phone but uh there's a little bit of space underneath right there and we can kind of see if some debris or whatnot got stuck in it um well i'm going to take the blades off next i'm going to go ahead and soak them down in some 
lube and see if I can get them off. You can see the blades have some rust on them. They're in good condition overall. They're, they're really, really, really close to the deck there. Which kind of leads me to believe that the spindle is off a little bit. I don't know. Y'all tell me. Um, and here's also the other blade. That blade actually is a little bent, so I might put the other blades on it to that or that came with this mower. But it's very interesting. Very interesting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get the blades off, and then we will go ahead and see if we can get this thing running. All right, so the blades are off. The deck is... I went ahead and finished just go ahead and cleanly breaking off that bracket. I think my dad's got a good kind of start. And you can see that it's going to need a little welding right there, too. Um, this bracket right here has got a little bit of a split in it. And so I'll... I'll mention that too. Hopefully this ain't too big of a welding job. I mean, this is the third one he's done for me. So now that I got that off, I'm, I'll go ahead and turn my attention to the actual getting it running portion. Um, I, truthfully, I just want to see if it'll make sure it turns over and then you know, actually see if it'll run. Um, first thing is first, let me grab an, a wrench here. I think it is a seven, might be a half. We're gonna take this, uh, this little piece off. It is a half, let me grab a half real quick. I'll do this off camera real quick. I'll get the half and then we'll continue. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Hopefully this is not terrible, although I'm probably thinking it's going to be very... Oh, yeah. Pretty bad off. Uh, very green. Very old. Very green and very old. I'd love to see if I can get a screwdriver up in there just to get these, get the bowl off. That way we can just at least look at it before taking the whole the shebang off. Um, yeah, you can see by the way that this uh, plunger is that it's in pretty rough shape. Um, with just old gas and gunk and things like that. Um, so what I usually do with these to get them back going spray them with a little carb cleaner and get it on a surface that is pliable here so that I can so it doesn't mess anything up a little bit of lubricant Get a pair of pliers and I just wiggle it back and forth until it frees up. So let me do that and then let me investigate to see if I can get the carburetor screws off so that I don't have to worry about currently taking the whole carburetor off. I just want to see if we can get this thing to, to kick over for us. Alright, so I took this and um, had the carb cleaner and lubricant in it. I've just been working it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You can see it's a little slow still, but you can see that it's moving. Hold down function is what needs to occur. So I'm going to keep working on this. This is one of the simple reasons, like if you just had a little bit of gunk in your carb, it could potentially cause this to seize up. And so that would potentially cause it to not run, uh, even if there's not a lot of trash in the car and your ports aren't, aren't gummed up. So um, now what I'm going to do 
is I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the mower just to seal it up and give this thing just a good bath so that uh, I've got a clean, clean mower to work on. All right, so I got a battery in it. I thought it was fully charged. It may not be considering that it may not have any cold cranking amps. This battery's old, so it wouldn't surprise me, but I'm gonna show you how many hours it has on it. Um, I was fiddling around with it. <clears throat> how many of y'all think? I was guessing around 300, considering it's about nine years old and it's probably used for a good six, but let's, let me show y'all if y'all can see that be a 159.4 hours on this thing so not bad at all and you can hear it's just the battery just doesn't have enough juice to crank it you hear the solenoid trying to click so what I'm gonna do I've got a good battery in that 38 inch I'm just gonna go ahead and swap it out real quick and honestly I mean even with the old gas and stuff in there I'm just gonna see if it turns over and tries to fire I might give it a little help with the starter fluid but yeah I mean 159 hour John Deere LA 105 pretty good all right so this battery is good and I want to caution y'all y'all need to use a left positive terminal battery and the ones that I have here thankfully I've got another one uh, this is a Duralast and the other one I have is federated so just be um, be mindful of that um, a left terminal battery just because the 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 positive cable is so short you can adapt to have the opposite end terminal battery with the with the right positive but if you want to plug and play a left positive battery I know um, Everstart does not work, and there's another brand uh, that I have in here that does not work. I think it's Interstate, Interstate and Everstart. But here's what's going on. I've got the switch on, and you just hear the... Starter solenoid clicking over. So tells me that I likely will need a starter solenoid so we're going to use the old um, don't try this at home method to see if this thing will turn over which it will so that's good um, I have to find a good starter solenoid I'm have a I have at least one lying around here somewhere I might try on it because um, that one's not uh, not clicking over so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to I'm gonna try and give an NT off for this video I'm gonna throw in a little bit of starter fluid here oh well there's that and I'm gonna see if I can rig start this thing so that y'all can uh, figure see if this is gonna work all right let's see here I just want it to crank over for us that's all I kind of want to see Spark score, here we go. Let's see, get this out of the way a little bit.
Maybe not, y'all. Um, well, let me see what I can do here. I would, like I said, I, I would love to hear this thing run. Pop a little bit. I might have put too much starter fluid in it. I'm going to try one more time. Let's see if we can get this thing to rock and roll here. Do that. Always hold the rubber on the... So I'm going to have to try plan B. Let me see if I can put a starter solenoid on this thing and uh, see if that will help. Alright, so the cold is uh, cold is getting to uh, everything. Because this battery, I looked, it has a date code of 2013. However, I do know that the solenoid was bad because we, cross, we crossed it. I found a solenoid which is good. However, it's not a side post solenoid. It's a it's not a top mount. Well, it is a top mount, but it doesn't have a 90 degree on it. And so the positive cable is too small to fit the way that it is mounted. So I gotta buy a solenoid anyways, because I'm short with the other mowers that I have here now. So we know this solenoid is bad, it's good as the trash. We just need the 90 degree mount. For the solenoid and then we can try to see if we can get this thing cranked I'm just doing my best I'm just trying to see if I can get this thing to, to just turn over at the very least but I'm not having luck yet let's see So, with all that happening, it's telling me that I probably need to clean out the spark plug on it. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I promise y'all, I will get y'all a running... You'll hear it hit over before this part ends. Hopefully it's not going to get too long on us. Well, I wanted to get it to fire for y'all here, but I have a little bit too much left to do to really get it running one of them includes having to drain the gas tank um, as well as cleaning the plug I've tried a new plug um, it's turning the turning the mower over it's just um, popping and whatnot like crazy I'm fouling the plug out because of the old gas so I've taken the gas line and siphoned it down there and I took out the gas in the carburetor here and what I'm gonna do is I might try one more time see if I can at least get it to kick over here before the end of the video I'm gonna um, grab a little bit of uh, I'm gonna clean the plug once again because I think like I said it's foul on the plug and I will try one more time to get it going if not we'll catch this back up in part two just so uh, part one doesn't really get so long and um, yeah so we'll see what we got all right I'm getting spark again a little bit of starter fluid in there and so let's see if it'll turn over without getting fed this watery fuel it doesn't seem like it so i'm gonna leave part one here i'm gonna keep toying with it off camera we'll pick this up in part two and hopefully we'll have a good little 
running mower here before long. Check in with y'all in the next one.